<laughs> hey everybody today we're gonna take this and make a bow saw let's get on it tick 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 boom hey guys thanks for joining me today i appreciate you being here we are going to take this simple flexible blade and we're going to turn it into a bow saw now you might be asking why would you ever have to take this blade and make a bow saw out of it? Well, let me just throw something out there. What happens if you're out to camp and you lay it down and somebody's walking around with an arm full of wood and just crunches right on your saw, bends the frame, breaks it, whatever the case may be, but your blade will still be perfectly useful. And if you take a look around, there are lots of trees and we can use one single branch and turn this into a usable saw again. So let's get cracking on that. All right, so what are we looking for? We're looking for a nice sized branch, probably about as thick as your thumb, and uh, probably about four or five inches longer on each side than your blade. And you want it to be green. So we got to find a branch or a sapling to make this. I think I have a pretty good candidate right here. This is a nice branch off of a tree. It's alive and it's got some nice straight sections to it. Doesn't have too many knots coming off of it. Knots are your enemy, by the way. Don't do knots. If you can handle it, don't. Knots, no, no bueno on the knots. But we're going to go ahead and harvest this part right here, and I'm going to see you back down at camp. I can already hear what you guys are saying. If I have a saw in my Leatherman, why would I need another saw? Why couldn't I just do what I needed to do with this? Well, that's about three and a half inches. That's, that's it. That's not a whole lot. I can't process logs if I'm trying to do anything with shelters, really. I can't do a whole lot with that. If I want bigger firewood, can't do a whole lot with that. That's why... I'm using a tool to make a bigger tool to improve what I can do around camp. Small saw, small wood, big saw, big wood. So the tree's been cleaned, delimbed it all, found out a nice section, is a nice straight section, didn't have too many limbs or anything on it. So it's about four or five inches longer there, about four or five inches longer down here. Now, we need to figure out which way this bad boy right here wants to bend. We don't want to go against the grain. We want to kind of make it, if it's already going one way, we're just going to keep on bending it that way. So if you're looking at it, if you, you can see that it's already wants to bend kind of like that so that's where we're gonna go with it and that's important and let me get you down here and I'll show you why okay so the wood wants to bend that way we know that this has got to connect both ends so we want to make sure that when we put our slits in that wherever we put the slits in that it comes down parallel and runs straight across and it's not kind of cattywampus to each other. This is the hardest part of doing this project. To keep it from splitting out, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple uh, lashings on here just to make sure that when I make the split, that it doesn't keep on running on me. I'm gonna do that to both ends. So the easiest way I've found to figure out where to put your slices in is if you lay it on the ground, you know that if it's like it's going to find its natural thing. If you try to do it up here, it's actually just going to keep on flipping right to where it wants to be. Open your palms up, start pressing down, and this will give you a good visual straight down. If you're looking straight down, you'll see exactly where you need to make your slice. 
So that's all you do. I just put a little mark on there with my knife, but that is where I need to make it. Get my baton. Tappy, tappy, tappy. And as you can see, a nice, clean, crisp slit. I'm going to do that to both sides. Get your slits in there. Put it down in there. You see a little deal? You're just going to put a toggle in there. Now watch, because I don't know if you know this or not, very, very sharp. This will hurt you badly. <clears throat> All right, now nothing more to be done except for connecting this end to this end. You've already got this end in. So this is kind of a dangerous part, but just be careful. Go slow. And just be careful nice and slow the reason I say slow if you go too fast it'll snap on you nice and slow and you can listen to the wood if it starts cracking ease off on it nice and slow and easy get it in there almost there now you've got a bow saw. This is clearly log. I could not process with my Leatherman. That's where this comes in. I'll tell you what, that's a workout. Now, a couple things about this. Number one, like I said before, very sharp. Very sharp. I have cut myself worse on a saw than I ever have on a knife. And that you can take that to the bank. So, when you're putting this together, be very aware. Very sharp. Lots of pressure here. Right? This is an inherently kind of a dangerous saw. So, when you're sawing, you don't want your head... To be in line. If this lets go, pack. You know, if anything is in the way down here, this will fling, and it will probably catch. So, and it's got teeth; it'll bite. So, be very aware when you're using these of some safety measures. But other than that, guys, this allows me to chew up bigger wood. What's that allow me to do? Make a better saw. I can tell you that. A less dangerous saw, which is what I like to call a buck saw. But that's another video altogether. So, guys, I want to say thank you very much for showing up today. I appreciate you being here. Today, you know, we went over the buck saw. There were some trials and some errors. Uh, that is actually the second branch that I used today. The first branch cracked right in half at a knot. Remember I was telling you? 
bad knots. Knots are no good. That's because when you go to bend it, it will crack at that knot. So keep that, uh, be aware of that. Uh, also be aware that you have to wrap and frap uh, or, or lash your ends. Otherwise, you'll have a split running all the way to the very, very end. And that's not what you want either. So now that I've got all the boring stuff out of the way, guys, do me a favor. Go to uh, bombproof underscore bushcraft on Instagram. Find me there. Like me, subscribe, whatever it is. I forget what it is. Like, subscribe, whatever. I forget. <laughs> Go to uh, Facebook. Find me there, bombproof bushcraft. And most importantly, guys, go ahead, take a look at uh, www.bombproofbushcraft.com. A lot of the stuff that you see me use right around here, uh, around my camp, uh, can be found on that website. And uh, until next time, guys, get out of the inside and into the outside. I got food to go eat. Take care. One more quick word about safety with the bow saw. It's not meant to be used as aggressively as your man-made, manufactured, highfalutin space age technology one. You're not gonna be able to put the pressure on it, you're not gonna be able to use it quite as fast, but it will work. Just be a lot more careful with it. Whoa. Morning guys. You want some coffee? Coffee? Heck yes I want coffee. It isn't none of that instant stuff, is it? Okay. Of course it's not instant. You guys said you wanted fresh ground coffee. I woke up early this morning and went to work on getting your fresh ground coffee. Now come on over here, set your cups on down, let me pour you some. It looks like there's a whole bunch of chunks in it. Are there supposed to be chunks in it? Don't worry about the chunks, guys. You can't have fresh ground coffee without the chunks. That's what makes it good. I don't know, I've never done had chunky coffee before. What's wrong guys, is it cold? That tastes like dirt. Hmm. Did it do something wrong? This is gonna be the best ground coffee they've ever had.